Welcome to We Are Everyone, a video and podcast series powered by Pivotal Moments, and we focus on the intersection of mental wellness in the workforce. We bring together young professionals and mindful executive mentors to bridge the generational gap and bring to the surface conversations about the importance of mental wellness and how to overcome career tradition challenges. Mental wellness is paramount. Join us. Welcome to We Are Everyone. I am your host, Jen Sherman, and we are in season three. I can't believe it has been since May 2020. Uh, it's 2021 now. We're in season three of, of the show, uh, and we have a really great guest on to launch the new series, uh, Tracy Power. She is the Chief People Officer at VECO. Welcome, Tracy. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. How are you, Jen? Doing well. I mean, you know, just bringing in the new year, bringing in the new year. Seems like it's the same year as last year, but it's okay. It, it does. It really does. I thought I was going to wake up and, and feel different. And I was like, oh, we're still here. We're still here, <laughs> so. but it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay. It's okay. So Tracy, I like to always start the show with a statistic. Um, and so today we're going to start with this one. 76% of people believe companies mm -hmm. should be doing more to support the mental health of their workforce. And something we've been talking about at Pivotal Moments mm -hmm. is mental fitness and being mm -hmm. aware about the importance of mental strength. So yeah. given this statistic yeah, and mental fitness, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about when you hear the term mental fitness? Um, when I hear the term mental fitness, I think it's it is your own um, innate ability to handle whatever stresses you in life, right? It's, it's your ability to um, handle difficult situations, sometimes easy situations, and understand um, how you react and respond to those situations and, and the feelings you have and understanding how you got to those feelings and then if it's going great for you, fabulous, because mental fitness can be good things, right? It gets you ramped up to do something, um, or it could be something that holds you back. So it's the, it's your ability um, to to handle what kind of life throws at you from an emotional and, and mental state. Yeah, and it's interesting because, you know, we, as we've evolved, frankly, I think the idea of mental health has become more prevalent probably over the past, you know, of course, five to 10 years where it's been more Mm -hmm. comfortable to talk about but particularly in this past you know 2020 understanding mm -hmm. really the power of the brain when it comes to these types of feelings and strength and you know perseverance or not feeling good right that's okay too right. but it's it, but the fitness aspect is that as the brain as a muscle i just think is really interesting in a uh different way to think about uh mental health Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, 2020 has thrown so many challenges at us. You know, here, um, so Vaco's headquartered in, in Nashville, Tennessee. We had a tornado hit about uh, the first of, actually it's March the 2nd. And think about the mental aspect of not being in control, right? It's a weather situation and it hits an area where, where we had employees that, that lived. And so the mental of understanding how they felt and how they could deal with that situation. And then, you know, right on top of that is when COVID really kind of took over in, in our area, in the Nashville area. Um, you know, it, it had been prevalent in uh, other cities and other offices where Waco, where Waco is. And, and, but it, it, it's how do you deal with those situations? How do you deal with that sudden change? And how mentally can you adapt yourself to, for many of us, is a new work environment. I mean, I, you see me in an office right now. Suddenly it was, you can't be here and we've got to move. And, and how do you um, utilize the tools that sometimes people didn't even know they had and then sometimes when you can't utilize those tools to help you work through a situation, what is out there? And I truly believe that employers need to be um, helping employees. I mean, when we hire employees, we hire the whole person. We get you, we get your family, we get your, your, your past experiences. We're going to build on with future experiences. But how do we help you in those situations work through just normal day-to-day -day stuff at work, but then also outside of work? How do we help you with stressful situations that will impact the workplace? Of course. And, you know, thinking of that aspect too is, you know, I remember when, um, with the 
with the wildfires that were also happening in California. And it's like how mm-hmm. with the smoke, mm-hmm. with the smoke in California, mm-hmm. plus mm-hmm. the COVID where that's affecting your lungs, like mm-hmm. w- it's the power of the things that are really out of your control. And then how can you leverage, you know, your mental fitness in order to take a step back and be like, what can I control and what can I not control? Mm -hmm. And then how can I also then also communicate with others around me, whether that's in, I mean, I don't know what the workplace and home place is these days, but how can I Mm -hmm. communicate with the people around me, how I'm feeling and how can we kind of like, relate Mm -hmm. in that aspect because I think the more you can communicate you know what's going on up here the better you can show up at Mm -hmm. home at work at home you know whatever 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 that may be right um so follow up to that how do you practice mental fitness on a daily basis and also encourage your team to adapt that same mindset you know I I think uh, for me personally, you know, a lot of times my work is my mental fitness, right? It, it, it's my ability to release, um, to do things again that I can control, um, which is which is a lot of what you just said. It just spoke volumes to me. It is that idea I can be in control of something. So what are those things that I can be in control of? What can I get accomplished if that's what you're looking to do? What can I move forward? What can I be a part of um, to help me work through whatever the situation is? And I think that's um, that that's a key component of it. The things I can't control, even though sometimes you get in that you get in that wicked spiral of I want to keep thinking about it, I want to keep thinking about it. It's how do you move away from there and say, okay, I am comfortable with what I'm doing. I'm comfortable with my situation, and I'm going to control this. And and refocusing your efforts to the things that you like to do that make you happy that get things accomplished for you I think is is how a lot of times I I try to compartmentalize those feelings um, for my team it's the same thing I think you, you know when you lead you've got to have empathy for what's going on and so when people start to get stressed understanding what is stressing them what what is causing you this feeling or what is causing you not to be performing to your highest level and then helping them work through that because we're all just people. We're all going through the same things, no matter where you are in an organization, no matter where you are in the country, we're all going through the same things at different times. So how can we you know, leverage what other people have learned and tried to help each other out? But it really is starts with that conversation. You have to know and you have to be aware before you can do something about it. And you have to have perspective. And that's something yeah. that's interesting yeah. of, I and I've said this in pre on probably pre previous shows that I've hosted is that I didn't learn the word perspective until I was probably in my mid twenties and I was like what I mean I've been have mm-hmm. I been that sheltered that I don't know what that word means <laughs> like perspective and so that's something that we'll um you know get to later in the interview in regards to talking about these different generations but I think to your point at least we can come we have the one commonality of this right now is this virus and also just what's going on in the world you know I was just talking to Mm -hmm. um, a colleague of mine in the UK and we were kind of like all right comparing lockdowns I was like well I'm in DC he's like well I'm in Mm -hmm. you know we're doing this it's and it's like you you can align Mm -hmm. with people globally right now mm-hmm. and that you know mm-hmm. while it's terrible and and with all the deaths and the, but it's something that's it's uni, it's also unifying so oh, it is it is but similarly our office in toronto um canada is on complete lockdown i got a message yesterday um from the managing partner there of you know we're going back we're going back home and everyone's going back home and so but that perspective creates is your reality Right. So my perspective on the situation in Nashville, Tennessee, may be very different than someone's perspective in a lockdown situation in Toronto, Canada. And so you have to be able to, in a way, put yourself in their shoes and think about what that feels like, because we've all now experienced it. We've all had the experience and 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 some of us longer time, some of us a shorter time. But what did you go through and think about that, especially if you went through, if you're going through the, you know, this time, if you're by yourself, if you're, if you're in your home by yourself, how do we connect, right? How do you connect with people more than just maybe a, a, a video or, or Zoom or a phone call? I mean, it's that physical presence. So how do we overcome that? And how do we empathize with that? And how do we create an environment where they, everyone still feels that warm hug, even though we are, you know, 
socially more than distanced. more yeah. yeah socially isolated yeah right. socially isolated no and and it's interesting because <laughs> everyone's kind of sometimes comparing like well you know because i live alone and you know i've been <laughs> um quarantining because i'm seeing my parents next week and i'm like mm-hmm. okay you know like but then i'm like oh you know but but you're you know you i'll tell my parents oh you don't understand you guys are together all the time and i'm alone they're like but then again they're in a whole different situation right because they <laughs> have never been this much together in a very long time so it's like right. you have to you can't and there's no comparing or judge. There's all just like no. it's perspective and empathy. So right. I think that's a really right. um, good point. And in follow up, you know, I think again, looking at 2020 and in March, and particularly how companies had to adapt quickly. This is a mm-hmm. new situation for any leader. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm-hmm. idea of this whole emotional intelligence and being able to adapt that in a very different type of way. But mm-hmm. and I think that we. As companies, they acted kind of quickly, quickly and swiftly as they needed to. But now that we're in 2021 and we have data and how our employees are feeling, you know, mm-hmm. what companies have you observed that you think are doing a good job in this area when it comes to mental wellness? And then also, you know, how, um, you know, how can, how can companies also mm-hmm. better support their employees and, um, support themselves and others around them? Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to toot my own horn. I think at Vaco we've done a we've done a great job of that because we're giving our employees personal autonomy. We're saying, what are you comfortable with? So if the office can be open because the area of the country is open, um, come to the office. But here are the rules you got to play by. Right? You got to stay six feet apart. You got to wear your mask. Please wash your hands. If you're not feeling well, stay home. But then again, if that's not your comfort zone, like if you're not able to do that because it's it because you've got parents you want to visit or you've got um, you're the only caregiver for small children and they're at home with you and you can't come into the office we wanted folks to have the autonomy again let them have that control over their work environment and what that looks like so that they can be their best selves now uh, of course I think you hit it spot on everybody thinks everybody else's situation is better the people that are by themselves think it's better the people that have no one at home think the people with all the kids and the dogs and the cats running around have got it better right so um we all you know we all um can empathize then or at least sympathize maybe with what's going on and realize that you know where we are again that's another mental or or wellness kind of um way of thinking about things be happy with where you are and or at least be understand how you got to there and then how do you continue what's working well for you what's working well with your spouse your significant other your kids i mean that's the beauty of this time we've all learned so much about what we can handle and what we can do and i think people have been ultimately so creative in in helping themselves as well and and you just hit the nail too is like helping yourself cuz i think <laughs> at the end of the day if you i mean I can't show up every day if I can't help myself. Mm-hmm. And if you're a mother or a father or, you know, a partner, um, you can't you can't show up and be, mm-hmm. you know, be there if you can't be there for yourself. And so I think mm-hmm. that aspect is really important where this, for anyone, no matter if you're, you know, you live with, you have a family of seven or you're a family of one or what have you, but I think a lot this this time period has made a lot of people to really to look inside, be like, "Oh, wait, am I happy?" Because like mm-hmm. you know, because like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we just breeze through a lot of things where you know you wake up, you go to your you know you have your routine, get to work at nine, you know, go through your traffic at for five. I mean, DC as right now, there's traffic and stuff because of what's <laughs> going on. But typically, this is so yeah. weird to like go around DC and there's no traffic. It's like. Yeah huh, this is nice. Like, this is really nice. It's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, it's, we've, I think that's sort of the reflection of this time too. So every day that you make it through, you reflect on what went well today and what would I change the next time, right? And whether that's, you know, kids crafts or setting up your Zoom meeting or the technology is not working, like how can I, you know, how can I help myself? And sometimes, literally, you just have to sit back and laugh, right? Because, um, because laughter is good for your, for your wellness, right? For your mental wellness as well. And sometimes it's just beyond your control. And it's like, I can't even believe this is happening. So you just kind of have to, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be everybody's great book from 2020. We're going to have a lot of reading to do um, probably in about 10 or 15 years, how I made it through uh, COVID, you know, lockdown. How I made it through COVID lockdown. And then like, and and also 
I'm I'm very curious to to see the history of this and kind of like the data that's going to come behind it, especially around like the studies around mental wellness, right? Yeah. And like isolation. But mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm just too positive when I say isolation. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but I also think you know to your point is. I think in the beginning, I remember when I was locked down with my family and my dad, you know, he was in a law firm. Typically, he had a he has the IT guy, right? Like the IT guy helped him with the Zoom. And now he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. I know that he had this one class. He's going to kill me for telling the story that like he was on mute and he had to find out later. And it was this whole shebang. He was so embarrassed. And I was like, it's not. <laughs> but then it's like we weren't laughing. I was cracking up. But I was even on edge. Where I was like, oh, my gosh, this is not happening now. I have like. I, you know, it's like, you know what? I can't, it, it, what's the, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? Like what's right. the worst? There's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, right. and, and I think, you know, going to that, and this goes into, uh, what I alluded to earlier, uh, previously, and, and as you know, this as the chief people officer focusing mm -hmm. on the people and the generations mm -hmm. in the workforce, and I'm sure you've done a lot of, um, you know, not research, but real time research as, as is in mm -hmm. your position. But we have four generations currently in our workforce. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this has been going on for some time now. But particularly now, you know, we've always had our, uh, perception or, uh, perception or just kind of definition of each generation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we could kind of put them in those categories, but now it's like, all right, stop with the name games and all this stuff. We right. are still here and we are also right. in a pandemic. So, right. You know, across these different generations, there's a lot of different outlooks on mental fitness and mental health. And I wanted to get your take on how should these different generations communicate about the topic, learn to understand each other, learn to support each other, even though, you know, the outlooks and experiences look so, like are so different. Yeah. You know, I think I think so. I'll, I'll start with the older generation. and I would probably put myself there um, in that group. I think. For so long, there was a stigma about talking about how we mentally felt. Like, how do we feel about work? If you were upset at work, if you were upset about something at work, if you were upset outside of work and came into work, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of, um, I don't want to say um, bandwidth, but there wasn't a whole lot of need to tell that story. There was almost a stigma attached to talking about your your mental fitness and, and how you were feeling about things. You you kind of just slide through the day and, and just try to play it off like everything's great and, and, and not really attuned and didn't let anyone be attuned to what was going on in your life. And I think that's the beauty of the generations that have that have come um, that have come up, you know, that are coming on to the workforce now is I find the younger generations are much more open to conversation. They're much more open to um, letting you know their feelings about things and how they understand things and the fact that there needs to be a balance between their work life and their home life and, and, and the boundaries that they'll set for themselves. And so I think that dialogue has helped older generations who may, and as you heard me say earlier, who likes to get into work and just work and work and work and realize there's more than just work, right? And um, and even though my work is so um, rewarding because I do get to work with people, uh, I mean, and work on people and work with people to help them get to where they want to be in their careers, uh, there's a lot of folks that don't have that opportunity. So the conversation about mental wellness and how I feel and how I'm feeling about work, um, I think is has grown up a lot. And I think the pandemic just really helped with that evolution. I think it sped it up, um, which is good. Um, we found that our employees you know, we're looking for more outlets to be able to have that conversation, whether it was about COVID, whether it was about social justice issues that were going on, whether about what's going on um, right now with the, with our democracy. People want that outlet to have that conversation about how they're feeling and what that does to them um, as a person and as an employee. And so I think that's been that's kind of been the great thing about these generations all coming together because I think the older generations feel like they can open up now about things that maybe they wanted to talk about. 
and just never felt comfortable or never felt that they had a safe zone to do that. And now this safe zone has been created for people to talk about these things. And it, and they should be talking about them at work. You can't put this stuff aside at work anymore. Um, you know, these conversations where you didn't talk about political things, you didn't talk about your feelings, that's all in the workplace now. And so if you're not doing that, it feels like you've, you're missing out and you're not serving and you're not going to be able to attract the, the employees that you want. And it's so true because I remember, you know, back in the day where it's like you would feel you have to suppress all those feelings and kind of show up and put that smile on and then you would take mm-hmm. home the stress. So then yep. that would come home with you and that, that would affect your home life. And that's not fair, right? But at this right. this way you kind of have that dialogue in the in the workplace if you will. And then mm-hmm. this way, you know, you can continue that dialogue if you would like, but it's not this built up stress and angst and anger or what have you, because I mean, mm-hmm. work is, a, I mean, it's just, it's life, right? I'm not saying you're angry at work every day, but if you've had a bad day, you <laughs> right. can actually express that and not feel that, you know, it's, you don't look good or, you know, this right. whole, it's, I always like to say, and I'll say this over is like the whole peeling back the curtain with the coronavirus is because you kind of have to like I mean half the time if you're zooming and there's kids in the background or 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 even if you do come into the office but you have to you it's it's that balance of listen I do have to see my elder grandmother on Friday but mm-hmm. I for my mental health need to come in the office you need to respect my boundaries as well of this is with distancing it's this whole other level of empathy and connection mm-hmm. that and care that I think we're seeing um, more than ever before. And, and I, I agree. And I truly believe coming out of this, when employees go to find their next, you know, their next career move and they start talking um, to their, in their friends or their network of people, I think how companies have handled this, how they've handled COVID, how they've handled social justice, how they've handled conversations in the workplace about these things, I think that's going to be a game changer for a lot of organizations that were more progressive and and started opening up the dialogue and realized that the whole person's coming here and we need to have these conversations because employees want that. And that's what we found with our employees. And I think other companies, um, other HR leaders that I that I talk with that are in my network talk about the fact that their employees want to talk about these things and and you need to be able to do that. And I think that's going to be a, a big thing for, for people. How did you handle COVID? What was it like in your office? What support did you give your employees at home, at work, um, in order for them to do the best that they could do in their career? And also, this really takes like the corporate social responsibility in actual mm-hmm. action. It's not, action. It's mm-hmm. not just slapping on CSR as a terminology, right? Like it's I, having just corporate but it's having social responsibility in general right and it's right. it's about you know having the these conversations in the work workplace or just being able to is how we actually can have just overall change because then it's, it's the pent up it's the pent up if you don't exercise your mental fitness mm-hmm. that's actually what's that deterring us from change because that's when all the negative or adverse feelings come and i think that you know work is f- probably like for me at least like 70% Mm -hmm. of my week at the moment. I mean, it will, you Mm -hmm. know, it'll even out as I, you know, but, Mm -hmm. but, but it is. So I think if I can't have, I can't feel I can have these open conversations with colleagues of mine. I Mm -hmm. mean, that's not that you're not really truly being your authentic self. And I think that's something that we're seeing more and more of. Um, And that also kind of bridges into boundaries. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to go back to one one thing before then is young professionals, because mm-hmm. as a millennial, I'm 28. I've, I've already kind of gone through the graduating and understanding how it is to write a proper email. Like I've kind of met my young professional crew, been in the networking. I mean, this, we really focus on talking about career transition on this, on this show. And have you seen what, how have you been onboarding, you know, some of these younger professionals who just graduated? I mean, they are probably shell shock right now. And mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. I was just wondering kind of what, what kind of trends that you've been seeing and how you're making them feel kind of comfortable in this uncomfortable world for them. 
Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of that has to do with the whole interview process, right? How they feel through the process and then making sure that onboarding is very purposeful. And yeah, a lot of what we're doing is over Zoom or over Teams to make people feel connected. But we've got also a lot of different avenues to make sure that our folks are being pulled in and connected to folks. Vaco is very much about relationships. So how do we establish those relationships early on with someone? So whether that's, you know, hosting a happy hour and we have all our new employees come to it and then breaking them out in groups so that they can meet other employees, whether that's a team meeting with, hey, we're bringing on someone new and um, we send to their home a whole package of Vaco swag. So they really feel like they're part of the team, right? It's a surprise at home. And then making sure that you're very purposeful with that communication, especially from a leadership perspective, making sure that they have the tools that they need, that they're getting the feedback that they need, that they're connected to the people in the organization that are going to help them because we hired them um, because we need them so desperately. So um, to, to help us with the work that we're doing to help our clients. And so making sure they feel comfortable in that is is really important. And purposeful being one. And that's another thing too, is the purposefulness because particularly when you, you know, listen, when you graduate and you're you're going to be you're all the time you're sometimes just wearing multiple hats like like it's like mm-hmm. you're going to be doing multiple things but i think yeah. it's the whole idea of that what they're doing is meaningful and making an impact mm-hmm. on the organization i think the millennials gen zers of the world like that's what we we love like social impact so as long as they like have that path and they understand mm-hmm. why they're doing what they're doing particularly since they can't meet meet um in person is I think right. really just important for you know the team to do as in in the current times that we're in so that sounds that sounds great yeah I mean I think it's that whole process right because you go through the interview and it's kind of a, a back and forth and you're they're trying you out and you're looking to them like oh, is this a place I want to be but then once you get there and you've made that decision to to move into the organization what do you know about the organization? What is their culture like? And how do we embed that culture really early on? Because, I mean, that's the lifeblood of an organization, right? So, And so if you bring out the fact that we want you to come with your whole self and we understand the dog's going to be in the background and the cat's going to jump up on the screen in the middle of the Zoom call, that's okay. We want to get to know you as a person as well um, because that's important to to us. And what's important to you is important to us. So how do we make sure that we're tapping into all those things that we can connect people faster, you know, once they do make that decision to, to join an organization. And I think that's what everyone's, you know, everyone's looking for when when they're hiring folks is they want to they want to give them the best opportunity that they can have that they couldn't have the experience anywhere else. And so that's really where we're trying to um, get one on one with folks, get them in small groups, get them in large groups, you know, invite them to as much as they want to be involved in um, as they learn their new job and as they learn the, the new organization that they're in. Yeah. And also on that note, I think it's it actually this is where culture really shines as companies mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you kind of take out the fancy offices, the snacks, mm-hmm. the events. Like it's really about yeah. the people. As the chief people yeah. officer, I'm sure you're speaking to that. It's like about the people. And like, yeah. you know what? You know, you show up with if you want to wear your baseball cap, if you're having a bad hair day, you know, it's a nine AM right. meeting. Okay. Like, but right. if we're client facing, maybe not, but like internally fine. But it's just that whole aspect. Um, and yeah. then this is another question. So boundaries. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there's a big importance here, right? And I understand, you know, with the younger generation there, they mm-hmm. want to, un- like, they like the idea of boundaries, but there's also mm-hmm. the aspect of, okay, of course, but sometimes, you know, we're going to have to mm-hmm. have a late night, right? So that's where mm-hmm. I go back to the generations kind of converging where you mm-hmm. kind of have to, they have to understand it's like, yes, it's nine to five, but also where you get to the older, it's like, well, I was nine to 12, you know, like I worked from nine to midnight and I, you know, busted, but, but so I was wondering, you know, in, in, in today's world, particularly, it's like, I wake up and it's like, I'm at my computer ready and, and I can create boundaries for myself, but that's also because mm-hmm. I create my own schedule. I was wondering, you know, yeah. how have you kind of defined that term boundaries to, uh, your team? Yeah. So boundaries are are a good thing to establish. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, especially for those folks working at home, um, you know, the computer's right there. You wake up, you go right to the computer. You could be on the computer all night long. So a a lot of it was expectation set um, by, you know, by leadership of, of what meetings do you need to be in and, and, 
and when do you need to be online, as well as just communicating, you know, again, expectations, what do I need from you? And as well as there needs to be communication going back the other direction of what do I need as an employee? I need to take time off. I've got to, you know, I've got to go to a doctor's appointment. Hey, I'm taking a lunch hour because I just need to decompress for, for an hour. You know, employers, leaders need to be respectful of employees' boundaries as well. Um, but there, if there are times when you do need to do some extra work, the team's got to pull in some extra time. Um, it's just setting that expectation um, early on about what you're looking for and not trying to be, um, I'll call it passive aggressive. How's that? You know, kind of the snide comment of, oh, well, I see you weren't online last night. You know, it's, it's you know, if, you, if the expectation is you're online, then make sure that you've explained that to someone, that the expectation is online. And then um, the vice versa is, is your expectation for me to be online all night? Because maybe this is not the right opportunity for me then. Um, and so understanding that, you know, I, I like to hire adults. I like to treat them like adults. If you know what you need to get done, if you can get it done in four hours, great. If you can get it done in eight hours, great. If you need it done in 16 hours, then we might need to talk because I don't want to overwhelm you, right? But there needs to be a dialogue as well as, you know, adults need to be able to control their schedule as well. So help set your own boundaries, but then also inquire about, you know, what do you expect from me and make sure those are in alignment. Because that's the whole thing, communication, right? Like so many yeah, people, there's so absolutely. much communication lost that it's like, and they just sit, you, people can sit in, in passive aggressiveness, Sally over here. I always, mm -hmm. no no offense, that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing to Sally. It's just like, that's the word that just came up. Like you're passive aggressive and it's like, that that is it's not good for anyone around. And then the commun there's the lack of communication. So I think at least right. the virtual world, I'm hoping has really right. taught people to over communicate. Yeah. And you don't have to tell them if you're going, you don't have to tell them when you're going anywhere, but it's just like over communicate to just so that right. you can manage expectations of when something's to come. Right. I'm not going to be online from this time to this time. Uh, yeah. It, it, where, where you go in your personal life, that's up to you. Um, but but just let me know. Right. Or or let someone know so that they're not expecting you to be there. Yeah. It's, it's all about communication. If, you know, it's even... You know, and also I think that impacts your mental wellness as well, right? If your manager or your leader is not communicating with you, did I do something wrong? Am, am I not, you know, am I not doing the job right? Did I like miss a deadline? I mean, having that ongoing communication and just checking in, how are you? I mean, I oftentimes just start off a communication, how are you? Because I want to know how they are. And I think um, my team especially at realizes when I say, how are you? I mean, whole you. And so just checking in to make sure someone is, how are you doing? Um, I think goes a long way into building that trust and that community that will build that communication as well. Completely agree. So we always ask our guests as well, mm -hmm. what does mental wellness mean to you? Mm -hmm. Mental wellness. Um, it's just making sure that, um, Mental wellness. Mental wellness means to me is that I am I am comfortable with who I am and how I respond to situations. That's mental wellness to me. I love that. That's a good one. I might take that. I'm going to adopt that one because that's <laughs> self-love. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. And then we always love to end with what's the resource? What's that resource? And this is going back to, you know, mental fitness and, mm -hmm. you know, how do you um, how do you flex your mental fitness muscle? Like what's that resource to help flex the, f flex the muscle? Um, so I, I have, I have done a lot. I like to do reflection. So reflection for me helps me flex my mental, re my mental, um, uh, muscle. Um, also I think anytime that you can, um, you know, rely on it, your self-awareness. So how do you feel in yourself? How um, how are you responding? I think a lot of that, as well as I will tell you, there's an app out there. I guess I can mention it. Um, Calm, um, I think also has some great resources that you can go to to just help you um, think through things, um, whether it's you can't fall asleep at night, whether it's just you want to meditate, um, whether it's you really just want to be able to um, get to a get to a Zen or get to a, a, a a balanced or neutral place in your mind. I think I think that's a great resource. I love that. Well, frankly, it's been 
amazing to have you on today. I'm so excited to have you as the pilot episode of season three. You set a great foundation for mm-hmm. conversations moving forward. Um, we have an amazing guest, uh, Tracy Power. She is the chief people officer at Vaco in Nashville. Hey, um, they also have offices <laughs> other places, but it's, you know, Nashville's where Tracy's based. Well, thank you so much. You've been such a pleasure to have on. I can't wait to actually come out um, to Nashville when some of this madness is over. But thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Jennifer, thank you so much for having me and you're welcome at Nashville anytime. Thank you for tuning into another episode of We Are Everyone. You can subscribe to We Are Everyone on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and also be sure to visit www.pivotalmoments.org to learn more about the organization. And we also want to hear what mental wellness means to you. So you can follow us on social media, submit your video, and uh, we will catch you next time. Thank you so much.